weird. Super weird. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Whiskey Entitled. I know. We've been gone for a little while. Charles is in the Philippines. I was dead, but I came back as a zombie. And now, now I'm a whiskey drinking zombie. Anyways, so we're excited to be back. We're excited to do a show today, even though we haven't really talked about a real topic for today. But since you guys are in chat, and I can see it on my phone, looks like we're having a good time already. So, Charles talked up the intro, and I got nothing. I thought that was kind of hilarious, by the way. I was like, you got it. You had it. And then you just, no, I don't it's have it. because I didn't know what to talk about. Because we have so much that we could talk about. There's so much going on in the whiskey world right now. Or we could just talk about our own stuff. Or we could talk about whatever you want. But um, Well, this is kind yeah. of the episode where we can just probably do whatever we really want. Um, it's just more cool. of an update and stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, since it's a drinking show, man, what is in your glass? Right now, um, it is, oh, it's part of the bottle that I picked up this week. So, I can't say. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so I thought this was a bottle that I didn't open yet, but I guess since I'm a big fan of sherry, I just opened the crap out of it right off the bat. It was the 15-year-old single barrel. Whoa, so bright. A single barrel of sherry? Yeah, sherry. And you posted today about the bourbon, right? I did because so. I have bottles that I purchased this week. So. All right. So, yeah, so um, I'm a big fan of this one, as you can see. A lot of these times, the bottles won't even go past the neck. It just You have so much bottles of whiskey to drink from back, back there. So this is one definitely I came back to a lot. So I don't blame you. My stamp approval on that one. All right. Are you ready? Oh, and also, um, what are you cheers, everybody. Ooh, nice glass. Fancy. I got the big dorky glass. Oh, you hear that? That's, that's nice. All righty. So this is the... Uh, Valvini 50 year cask 191 with the David C. Stewart MB signature on it. It's just a crystal class. It's whatever. Fancy got it from a weird event. Don't know if I'd do it again. I definitely would do it again. Dude, you crazy. would do it again. Come on. You even got him to say, like, uh, what's up, YouTube? Come on. That was cool. <laughs> David C. Stewart saying, what's up, YouTube? was like the, I don't know. It made my life. So, all right. I got two new bottles. Do you have any new bottles? Mm -mm. All right. First new bottle. It's not all that new. It's a Balvenie uh, single barrel. This is the bourbon barrel. Yep. So this isn't my first one of these. This is actually my second, and I really wanted to second crack one open. Second bourbon one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I found another one on the shelf, bought it for an undisclosed amount of $135, and now it's uh, open because I was like, well, I want to drink it because yeah, I didn't open my other one. So there's that, and I picked up two other bottles, but they're both the same, so I only grabbed one. Fair enough. And it is this right here. This is an older classic cask, oh, Aberlauer, 12-year um, ex bourbon only, so it's a twelve year Averlauer that doesn't have sherry, sherry influence. Yeah, which is which is what they're known for, right? They're known for their sherry cast. So correct. So this has none of that influence. Uh, okay. can, I can tell you this right now. Um, it down. is more viscous than it, it's like drinking simple syrup. It's that viscous. It's so good. It's that good. It's so good. viscous. Okay, got it. But was it? It tastes good. It tastes good. Oh no no! It's super fruity. It's really not like a regular Averlauer. It's okay. very fruity. It's very delicious. But like it's super viscous like yeah. the first thing i noticed on my palate before it even flavors i was like yeah. man this is like simple syrup that's good man and to be honest that's one thing that i feel as though a lot of whiskey manufacturers can't pin down is like how to get it so viscous because if yeah. they could i think they would do it with every single whiskey because that, that velvet well, they, some of the brands try to do it the viscosity for the scotches they claim is due to the shape of the reflux bulb yeah. that you have on the uh, on the stills yeah but i don't know it's it just sounds like a bunch of like witchcraft. Yeah, that's why. Like, that's why I feel as though like because that's something that I look for a lot. That's why I feel as though that in, in port finished whiskeys you get that a lot. I think it's because yeah. of the heavier um, port influence on it. But <laughs> um, yeah, if if I could make a whiskey, that would be one of the things that I would want to put in there. Is make sure it's like you know simple, super syrupy, viscous. viscousy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Luis, the fifteen year bourbon. You said you have yet to see that one. It's not on the shelves anymore. That's why this was actually <laughs> this was actually bottled in nineteen ninety nine. Um, the bourbon ones haven't been done in a really, really long time. I think my other one was bottled in like 94. Uh, I don't think they do any more 15-year single barrel. They do a sherry once in a blue moon, sherry. but um, I don't see it on shelves that much. Usually I pick yeah, it. I don't think the bourbon ones are done anymore at all. Yeah. No, Kevin, I agree, man. Mouthfeel is a difference. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, no, um, I, I'm a big fan. I wished Balvini does more 15 years of different stuff because I know it's just the bourbon and then the sherry. It'd be pretty cool they do the kind of thing with like 
um, how they do their 17 year old, how they do that rum cast. Oh, 17s and, so and the 14s. Yeah, I wish they kind of did that with the 15 line. I mean, they already have the 14s. I bet a bunch of that True. is 15. Uh, yeah. Also, side note, um, I have whiskey news. Yeah, go for it. What's the what's the whiskey news? Do it. Okay, so uh, Aaron, if you guys know Abold, he sent me a message on Instagram about Virginia Distillery. Uh, I didn't know they were going through a little bit of a not a lawsuit. But I guess they're having issues with the Scotch Whiskey Association over in Scotland because they put the word Highland on the front of their bottles. I didn't grab a bottle to show you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. But if you guys have ever looked at a Virginia distillery bottle, you can see on there it does say Highland, like Virginia Highland malt, which um, isn't confusing if you understand that they're blending some Highland malt with uh, Virginia distillery stuff. But according to SWA over there in Scotland, they are super pissed um, that it even has the word Highland in it, and they're trying to protect, you know, obviously Scotch whiskey. But whether or not it actually makes a difference, I don't think it will. And apparently, they've been trying to work with uh, Virginia Surly for like a year, and nothing's been resolved. So I don't know what's going to come of it. But it was an interesting article to read. I think it was on Whiskey Cast. But mm, yeah, interesting. Because so, like when I see it, guys are it says whiskey from Scotland, so it's not like they're putting anything behind your eyes. You know, it right? It's whiskey from Scotland yeah. from the Highlands. That's Married like with legend. Virginia whiskey, distilled Correct. from malt mash. So. Yeah, so it says everything it that's going you. on. And I, I do you does that bother you? It doesn't bother me. No, it's it's TTB approved. So it's like whatever. So somebody said this label's fine, but it's a Scotch Whiskey Association over in Scotland that somehow is like Well, it doesn't say Scotch on this bottle, so they can suck it. That's that's what's so silly about it, right? It's like why are you guys jumping over the pond. This side of the pond? Yeah, didn't we just have July 4th? Didn't we just remind you guys of our independence? Yeah, come on. You guys oh have to go gosh, work I... on Friday. You, you, yeah, I had to work on Friday. Well, Thursday. You guys not to <laughs> work on Thursday. Thursday. Oh, man. So, yeah. So, that's what's up in the whiskey news. I didn't know what else to throw Ooh, in there. There's other want, stuff. You want to toss another thing? And you got the, I mean, we could have uh, thrown the Jim Beam thing in there. Or, yeah. I, I, I think we're probably all dead with that one. But um, the McAllen's new uh, Make the Call video. Oh, you seen those? I have mixed feelings about those videos. I, I hate when they... Them spam and every one of their ambassadors and their accounts spam. do it all at yeah. one time so I'll, I'll wait till later to watch it all yeah i just went blah, 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 and i'm like all right cool you, you guys got caught for a silly commercial now you add a new one so yeah i did the serious one so that people didn't jump off of cliffs no yeah so what i what i saw anyway and i just clicked through it was basically just like talking about the distillery and stuff like that so i'm like all right cool that's basically what we did in the tour yeah that's all you just you gotta share it with the world but yeah, that's all they're doing. Um, that's basically it, to be honest. With the whiskey, I didn't really see that much for news. Yeah, anything else? I mean, the Jim Beam thing where they lost forty five thousand no, dollars, but I it's like one percent but... of their stocks. Yeah, that's oh one point three percent. I thought it was just one percent. Still sucks. But yeah, apparently, uh, and yeah, Luis, there's, an, <clears throat> there's another McAllen ad that's been going around. Yeah. If you see it on Instagram, you see it on social media. Uh, so the Beam barrels. I read an article about that. I know. I should stop reading so many whiskey-related articles. But I read an article about that, and it actually said, like, I guess the number of fires that are being suffered uh, is less than ever. It's just It just seems like more because the news has gotten better. Yeah. <clears throat> but apparently, like, 100 years ago, there used to be one, like, every week because yeah. Fumble. distilleries would just dis- – yeah, distilleries would just disappear because of it. Yeah. No, and, so. and to be honest, I'm, I'm not a big Jim Bean – fan so i don't even know what barrels are in there so maybe it's just why like, are you wearing a blue shirt i know why are you wearing a blue shirt is this no. a whiskey entitled uniform i don't know mine has designs on the bottom you just can't see it oh mine has no design. okay i know what you All wear right. you just wear the exact same shirt every freaking day it's weird sometimes i wear different ones hater fine all right that's true blame it on the <laughs> autism <laughs> yeah okay i have autism no no actually I'm like no um oh yeah so the topic of the show today yeah so Does anybody know what it is no, I don't even know what it is. It's basically just an update, right? So, um, yeah, thank you yeah, guys. Why we were gone so weeks. first off, thank you so much for the new patrons down below. Thank you so much. We're almost at a hundred dollars uh, per month, which is amazing. Um, one thing I want to do, and I'm probably gonna put it in a uh, Patreon post, is that I want to get to around a hundred and fifty dollars per month, which will allow us then to purchase some um, challenge coins. Like everyone else is doing, but um, the kicker is, I think ours is going to be metal and not plastic. So I'm going to. You know, we could also do good quality. What? We could also throw samples in the mix. We could, but I don't want to publicize that too much. Um, Me neither. I wouldn't ever want to say that. I was just throwing it out there. I will have to say that if we do do a distillery only (laughs) thing, um, like we did last time, um, I think that's the time we do it. So uh, a whiskey that you guys can't reach out for. 
like we did in Scotland. Oh, yeah. I think that you guys would appreciate that a bit more than just random samples from our list. Because if you do ever need some samples, please feel free to reach out to us. I think we both just charge the empty bottles. So, a lot of times whiskey is supposed to be shared. So, we're not the type of people to just keep our stuff. So, yeah, it's true. But, um, yeah, so um, I'm going to try and reach out to you guys a bit more. Um, thank you again so much for all your support. It means a lot to me. It helps me on bad days because that means that you guys are putting in not just your support, but your actual money <laughs> that you're working for. So, that always makes me wake up in the morning and be like, all right, I got to do this because you guys are paying me. So, Look, one person said doo doo. Now we're all saying doo doo. That ain't chocolate. Hey, that's doo doo, baby. That's why I say doo doo. Um, but Gross. yeah, um, had amazing whiskey tasting over in the Philippines. Brought it. Uh, brought over some Macallan Twelve Double Cast, which people said was okay. It wasn't that great. Um, oh, oh, oh! Tell us what bottles did you get from the brands? Because yeah. brands gave you bottles for this. So, right? um, Edgerton Group gave me bottles. They were the only brand that gave me bottles. But Makers oh, wow. Mark were able to hook me up with their brand ambassador who gave me a lot of information on their stuff. Um, okay. Transcendent Bird. Remember we met her? And yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, she yeah. works for Makers yeah. Mark now. I know. She quit with Highland Park. Yeah. I was I actually watched that on Instagram. Yeah. So um, she sent me a bunch of her information and her trip over there to Makers Mark. And she gave me a bunch of stuff that was great to share with the community. Um, so we had that. We paired that with chocolate because bourbon and chocolate work really, really well together. Um, it seemed like the Asian palette thought it was a bit too strong. Maker's Mark at 45%. Um, I don't know why, but that's just how they felt. Um, then we had, from the Edgerton group, we had the McAllen 12 double cast. Um, basically teaching um, the audience about um, double cast maturations, sherry cast, European and American differentiations between those. And then the new facility of what they did and th how things could change. Um, had to bring that up. Because if they did visit, I want them to know that, hey, this could be different. And you have kind of the same feeling about that. Hey, I, no, it's like I said before. I think all the people who are <clears throat> who've never been to this old distillery and you get a chance to go to the new McAllen distillery, you're going to love it. You're going to have a great time. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be like, this airport is so beautiful. Where do I catch my flight, my whiskey flight? Get it? There you go. <laughs> um, the next <laughs> bottle, bottle was the Glenrothes. Maker's Cut, which people loved. Um, I personally wished we had the McAllen 18 Sherry Cask to kind of give them that big Sherry or the Abelara Abana, but I think the Maker's Cut kind of did the point with what um, a Sherry, first fill Sherry maturation could do, yep. and it seemed like the Asian palate was accustomed to more Sherry influence. So it was great. Um, we had a full bottle... Um, in the Philippines, in, a, uh, in the Philippines anyway, um, they did not have any distribution for that bottle yet, so they flew this one from Scotland or from Singapore. So it was a 700 ml bottle, so I'm assuming it was from Scotland. So oh, wow, yeah, no, um, it so they released it for the Philippines anyway market. They released it at Whiskey Live for the Philippines about four or five months before that, but due to allocation issues that they had. And not enough stock, they couldn't ship it to the Philippines yet. So my my group of people were lucky enough, or probably one of the first few people to even try it there in the Philippines. That's pretty legit. They loved the bottle. Um, they actually asked the um, brand rep, or not brand rep, um, the distributor rep that was there when they can get it. Sadly, he was like, I don't know yet. So, but he gave us pricing. But um, that was the one bottle that everyone was like, I want this. I want the circle bottle, this this <clears throat> the short bottle. I'm like, all right. So. Um, next up, we had Highland Park 12, which is great. So I taught them about Heathered Peat, which personally I wished I learned earlier than our trip. So it was nice to show them that. And Hold on. Until we went on our trip to Scotland, you didn't know that Highland Park was much more heathery peat? No, I just didn't know what Heathered Peat was compared to what Isla Peat was. Yeah. Didn't do my research. What? And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, that makes more sense now. It's a lighter peat because it's not a fucking tree. What? Yeah. Great education. Who knew? Yeah. Now you know. Um, and knowing is half the battle. Yeah. And then um, with the Highland Park 12, I put Lafroy 10. So you got the two different peats. Everyone, oh, yeah. That's real different. So what's funny was like there were some foreigners that were there like, I love this stuff. And then the Asian <clears throat> pal was like, we hate this course, shit. Like <laughs> give, us, give us the uh, – again, Roth is back. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, 
And then um, a buddy of mine that I went to high school with, he owns a chocolate company. And um, we paired some other chocolates from um, conflict zones in the Philippines where different valleys um, had different cacao beans. And then they do them differently. And they, it was nine day difference between the chocolates. So That's legit. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. Um, yeah, he paired them up really well. And education that I didn't know happened was in the Philippines. Besides Latin America, it's the oldest manufacturing of ch- manufacture of chocolate, and they have some. Of the, true? Yeah, they have some of the old. That's three hundred years ago. Was like the first time they did chocolate. A lot of the Spaniards brought it over, and that's why. it um, the chocolate cacao beans is some of the rarest um, varieties in the world that were there, and the local farmers didn't even know. They just thought they were just growing cacao beans and so on and so forth. And then, yeah, that's pretty legit. Chocolate time. Chocolate yeah, time. Do it. Correct, Ben. Do that it. is the number one account on Instagram. I heard it's yeah. more popular than uh, than the yeah. Sun. And then um, just to wrap it up, um, I got some very <clears throat> positive feedback. Um, people liked it, the fact that I wasn't selling them a product, like most brand ambassadors are trying to sell you on. Yeah. Something. When, so when you messaged me that, I thought that was the most interesting thing of all the things you said, and I actually passed that along to a McAllen brand ambassador who's looking at doing a podcast, mm-hmm. and I warned him. Like, <clears throat> I flat out warned him. Look, the problem is a lot of people don't trust ambassadors. Like you have to sell this stuff because it's your job, yeah, yeah. and it's hard for people to trust you. I, I would, I wouldn't say trust you. Like I would trust a McAllen brand ambassador with McAllen. They will know the ins and outs of McAllen and how it's done. I would trust a McAllen brand ambassador with McAllen off record. Me and them sitting down at a bar hanging out. Okay, all right. I would not because yeah, I. So here, case in point. Yeah. I went to a I went to an Edrington tasting for one of Edrington's brands. I'm not going to say which one it is, but I went to this tasting. It was pretty legit. And afterwards, I ended up talking to one of their reps, and I was like, look, uh, you guys came out with the new classic cut, and I don't like the taste of it. I think it's pretty horrible. I think it's the American Oak influence. And you off the record, the obviously, the they were like, hey, I feel the exact same way, and it's funny you say that because we ended up talking to a bunch of people, and McAllen were like, hey, this is a really different direction, and it's not anything like what we're used to. And, I mean, the person agreed with me, and I was like, this is crazy. But, like, because it's yeah. their job, we just listened to it's spiel crazy. about how it's gotcha. so good. All right, fair, <laughs> so, I mean, enough. It makes sense. It's like when I had Tracy do a, a one minute whiskey video about the winter storm. Yeah. I know Tracy likes the winter storm, but the number of people who commented and were like, I don't believe this. And like the people who were just like, this is, this is trash. Yeah. I, I was really surprised by how much distrust there is for ambassadors. You know, it was interesting. Cause like, um, they were just saying how I was basically just one of them, another person just trying to sell it. And I, and I was honest with yeah. them. Like I told them this is McAllen's supposed to be like the the Rolls Royce of whiskeys and stuff like that. But here's the Gunrothis, which you have here, that I personally like a lot more than this McAllen. And then people were just like, yeah, and like I like this. And what I didn't want to do is put people on the spot. So the first thing I said to everybody is, drink whiskey however you freaking want. I don't care what you do with it, ice, water, whatever. But first, please try it neat, and then yeah. do whatever you want. Absolutely. And then if you know, I told them like, hey. Put water. I, I specifically asked um, the team to put waters next to everybody's glass. And I told them, hey, just dunk your finger in there, cut a couple of drops. If you want, add more, so on and so forth. And if you yeah. don't like it, push it forward. I'll take it away and I'll throw it away. You know, like, and some people like, especially with the Lefroy 10, a lot of people didn't like it. I'm like, that's fine. You're, that means at least you know what peat is, this type of peat. Now you can avoid it and focus on sherry. Yeah. And that's what Steve, a lot of people I disagree. Like. Winter storm is not good, but that's. Is that the – is that the – no, that's not – yeah, the Winter Storm is a new one, right? The 21-year-old? Winter Storm is in the white ceramic yeah, bottle. Yeah, I didn't like it's that the 21-year-old that ended up getting finished in Vidal too, Ice Wine. It was too flavorless? Light? Yeah, it was super light. Yeah. And I just – I won't say flavorless, boring. but yeah, it was, it was light. <sighs> but yeah, yeah. no, um, I thought it was really great that they told me that they tr- – because they had a Shivas um, tasting probably like a month ago. And yeah. that person was definitely trying to sell their product. I mean that's pretty no Ricard. Everything they do feels like a sales pitch. Yeah. I went to one. I will never go to another one. I went to one Glenlivet tasting, and I'll, I won't do it again because it just felt like a sales pitch. It was not a good yeah, time. Yeah, so that's that's why this felt like it was all natural. And then afterwards, we all just chatted. I walked around, talked to them for 20, 30 minutes each, and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, a lot of them asked, like, you know, why did you get into this? And it was more like personal. It was like they want to know me, not just the whiskey and the brand. So, I was, I was great. It was. Well, it was. I think it was. Yeah, it was, it was my first like whiskey, official whiskey tasting and stuff like that. And I, I'm excited if I can ever get the opportunity to do it again. So we should do it, Steve. Dude. Steve, we agree all the time, buddy. Um, doing a tasting like that, I think that's legit. I think um, 
I actually think that if if you propose stuff like that to brands, I think that is closer to the future of what brands want to do. Yeah, it, only because yep. who wants again to listen to the brand ambassador talk about their yeah. own hooch? Like that's fine, but yeah, no, you can say rose colored glasses, sure, same yeah. kind of thing. Like that's not going to. It's going to feel yeah. like a sales pitch no matter what they do. And the the, the good thing is, like, you got to think about it. Edgerton Group got, what, three of the bottles? No, four of the bottles out of the no, – three of the – Highland Park, front of office. They got three out of the five bottles. So their brand was represented in this. And, you know, like the I – mean, Three out of everything else? Yeah, I mean, three out of everything They didn't else. give you any Snow Leopard or Famous Grouse? They tried to give me Naked Grouse. Okay, there you but go. But the bar owner has bad stories with – Famous Grouse. Why? So he's just like, it's one of those you drank too much and you pass out kind of moments. Oh, Famous Grouse is boring, but actually pretty the decent Naked not that what bad. it is. It wasn't that bad. So we still kept the bottle and we gave it to people afterwards. We just didn't talk about it. Oh, and okay. And then for me, I personally brought in a Glenfiddich Project 20, which people liked yeah. a lot. I was like, hey, thank you so much for staying. Here. I bought a, bo- a bottle from my personal collection. I would like to share. A lot of people liked it, enjoyed it. So it's just making you friends and – um, that bottle is now in um, the owner's private locker. So if I ever go there again, bottles. Oh, there. that's sweet. Yeah. So, but yeah, let us know if you guys want us to host mostly Wally to host a <laughs> whiskey tasting. He's a smart guy. I'll be the fun guy. Fun guy. <laughs> um, but yeah. Because you're a mushroom. I'm short. I'm probably toad. No, I mean, I mean mushrooms. You know, they're they're fun guys. Yeah, fun guy. All right. So besides you chatting on on the chat, what, that's what's it. Up with I have you? nothing exciting to talk about. Really? There's nothing that happened in my life. The whole time you were gone, I was that's just sad. crying about how bad it was. Like I was gonna do a live stream on Instagram, then I just didn't. I don't know. But no, to go back to what you were just talking about. Okay, so you guys want to hear a weird story? Yeah. Uh, all right. So there's a, a whiskey. No, there's a there's a new Instagrammer uh, who does. Who's actually a gamer but she's trying to do some whiskey stuff. Anyways, uh, she's trying to do some whiskey stuff and we're going to meet up in DC. That's cool. But like, uh, she sent me a screenshot cause she did a shout out in, on her live feed for a scotch and sniff. And I was like, that's cool. Um, but then I went to her stream to go watch it. And I don't think she expected me to do that, to find it and go watch it. And in there, she's like, yeah, I'm going to meet up with this guy. He's like, she's like, it's the fat black guy, but he's part Korean. And I'm reading this and I'm like, <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. But I'm like, whatever. It's accurate. That's good. I mean, if that's what you got to use to describe people. That's what you got to use to describe people. She was playing games with, like, she was playing Fortnite with, like, a Korean guy. I could hear the guy talking in the background. I was like, oh, this is legit. Oh, you so. lost me at Fortnite, bro. Oh, I don't play that game. I think it's stupid. I played twice and uninstalled it. Yeah, so it's on, whatever. Man. But the point of what I'm saying. Oh, Christian, it's not over. I'm just. Community is weird, yeah. and sometimes meeting new people can be weird, but it's fun anyways. Yeah. No, it's not over, man. Like I, have, I just want to make sure Wally had time to talk because I did. Take I don't know how much time there is at all, actually, because oh, it says fifty minutes, minutes, but there's left. no way. We have eight minutes left. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Christian. Uh, yeah, no, he's talking about that Sherry video that I made with Steve. If you guys haven't had a chance to see that, this yeah. could be a short episode. Today. I'm no, excited. But what's what's I'm just gonna go what's kind of fun was um, that I got to talk to the Edgerton Group, not just brands individually yeah so um thank you mccall and trish for hooking me up with the um rep team in uh, singapore that was amazing i worked with sam over there um and you know i didn't realize how easy it was just to reach out to brands and stuff like that i thought it was gonna be a lot you know they they of course they saw the youtube they saw the instagram so i got that part but um no it was great like she gave me a, a basically a list of what was i looking for and then she offered her own opinions on what i should be She's showing off. Um, I, the Glen Rothis one was a bit harder to get. I kind of wanted the Highland Park 18, which we talked about. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was interesting. And then seeing these people, like, because a lot of them were newer to whiskey, so they didn't really yeah. try these, but they've heard of the names before. Um, they never heard of Highland Park yet. That's but weird. But McCallum was one they heard about. Maker's Mark they heard about because mostly in cocktails over there. Um, so, yeah, it was just nice, you know, the – Glen Rothis one as well. They were very like, what's this? And I, you know, I was gonna be like, hey, they changed branding, but I'm like, they don't know what the old branding was. So what, why would I? Why would I show them? You that? don't even have to mention it. So I didn't mention it at all. I talked about how this is a non-age statement, and a lot of them are questioning like, so what does that mean? Like, how old is it? I'm like, well, 
I personally know it's around 16 year old. That's what they told us, right? When we were there. 15. 15, 16, yeah. So um, I told them, like, it could be this, but it's going to be more than four years and so on and so forth. And <laughs> More than three years, I promise. Yeah. So it, w- it was just interesting, like, seeing people for the first time, under like, trying to get the grasp of non-age statement. Because, like, that's how we were, well, a couple of years ago when we were like, what? Because there's no age statement on these things. And you're like, is it something I trust for? Is it really worth the money? So on and so forth. And that was because like, everybody's afraid it'll be ninety percent three year yeah. old and ten percent. And that and that's seven. what they're talking about. Like, hey, like, what if this is just three year old? Like, well, judge it by the juice. Like, try it. If it tastes like shit, then forget about it. But if it's a, and that's and that's what I was trying to instill to them, and hopefully instill to you guys and everybody that it just. Oh, that's actually a really good question, uh, Steve. I'm only going to call you a few names this weekend. I promise. <laughs> Uh, Steve is hosting an event up in Philadelphia where I'll be going up there and taking some pictures and doing some videos. So awesome. It should be a good time. Any women in the tasting? There were That's three. A good question. There were three women in the tasting. That's it? Out of how many people? Uh, a dozen? About 10? 10 to 15? Out of 10 people? That's 30%. That's a heck of a representation. Yeah. No, it was, I mean, for a normal tasting. Anyway, no, it was, it was really good. Um, there were some older people that um, – there's like three or four people that are around the 50, 60 age. Hot. Um, and then everyone else was like the younger – generation like more of our age the women were around our age as well so like mid 30s yeah mid 30s mid to <laughs> early 30s um but yeah no it was great some of them were like oh you know this is like my second tasting my third tasting or like i'm just getting into whiskeys i came from gin a lot of people in asia drink gin so a lot of that is kind of like and dude i didn't realize how different certain gins were because i tried the weirdest ones ever so they have like half their bars, like all different types of gins. And what's interesting is when everyone does a gin and tonic, they'll pick their gin out. It's like when, yeah, when I, I mean, when I do my old fashioned, I'll pick my, my bourbon out or my rye out. But these guys were like, Oh, I want this gin with my gin and tonic. And then, so I went to a bar this weekend, uh, with Sergio that allowed you to pick, like you get to pick your whiskey. You get to pick your bitters between a choice of bitters. You get to pick your simple syrups between a choice of simple syrups infused with different flavors. Awesome. And you got to like essentially like customize your cocktail. Yeah. And it wasn't just like one or two choices. It was like there were like 15 choices for the whiskey. They were, like It was super good. Yeah. It was like a really, really good idea. Something I think maybe more bars should do to make it interest. Smaller bars. Like yeah. if they're not niche and really, really good at doing cocktails a certain way. Yeah. Like smaller bars should do that to give people options. Just yeah, they- like it. Your regular person doesn't care, yeah. but your, your connoisseur who comes in, make it interesting for them. Yeah, since they're a cocktail you know? bar, they um, and they had a bespoke list of, like, here's your gin and tonic, and then they actually give you, like, it's on off days, too. It's not, it's not like on Friday or on Saturday when it's, like, their busy days, but yeah. um, they'll come out with a whole kit of all these different herbs and spices and stuff, like, for you guys. Be like, oh, yeah, here's all your peppercorns and stuff like that, and they'll walk you through it. So I'm like, holy shit, that's, that's service right there. That's like, legit. Yeah. yeah. But, um, Super legit. And then they were saying how the Philippines is not big into whiskeys yet. So um, that's why like they're hoping to see more like people like me or brands to come in and talk to people about whiskey because it seems like that's kind of their their rum you know what I mean like it's it's, it's gonna it's be coming up it's gonna be people like you yeah it's gonna be smaller people that are bringing it in that bring the enthusiasm that are gonna build it into something great I have no doubt about that thanks Scotch Bulger I'll I'll take a look at that one there was this weird one that tasted like um, rose water was really really good that actually sounds good oh yeah it was, it was so different too because like um, when I was chilling at the bar. A lot of people are like, oh, so you into are you into gins? And I'm like, no, I'm not into gins. Like, all right, you got to try this. So they started buying me shots of different types of gins and we're just smelling <laughs> it and trying them out, which was really kind of cool. So, <clears throat> and then I reciprocated with like, here's all the whiskeys and stuff like that, and we started doing that too. So, yeah. the right way. Yeah, sharing the passion, man. Try this brown water. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. guys, I don't know what time it's at, but I'm really excited, and yeah. uh, I want to tell you guys next week we'll have a real topic. I promise. Yeah, sure. No, we just want to update you guys. And th- again, thank you so much, Patreon supporters, for your help and support. Yeah, oh, hold it means wait, a lot. Stop. I had no idea. So Charles was like, yeah, we got a bunch of new hate Patreon supporters. And I was like, what does that mean? So like super, super thank you. Um, and I'd like to give a double thanks to some of these people who are on here. He's bringing up the list now. But double thanks to Michael S. Because you've been supporting Scotch and Stiff at the same time also, which is super cool. And double thanks to Daniel Halston. Because, Daniel, you are also doing the same thing where you're supporting both these channels. Yeah. So that's really, really cool. I appreciate it. Yeah. <clears throat> I know that Charles appreciates yeah. it. So, yeah. So, Thank you. Alexandra Blandis Bay, Christian, Dakota, Daniel, Kevin, Leo, Rachel, Martin, Michael S., Rose, Ryan, Scotch Test Dummies, Good Shimon, Lord, Shimon. Steve, Wally Dyer, and um, Whiskey Throttle. Wally Dyer, never heard of him. Yeah. But yeah. Where is Shimon? 
But yeah, thank you guys so much. We're almost at $100, which is amazing. I would never expect my wallet dream that you guys would be paying for something you get for free. But thank you so much. Hey, if they, if they drop out, it doesn't matter, man. You guys watching here <laughs> is all that matters to us and supporting us. I get, oh, and also, I think this week I'll be doing um, personal questions. So this week it was cereal. What cereal you um, ate? Or like that was eat. such a good question. So and I know I'm that you think it's that. an insult that I like Basic Four because I I'm a boring person. Hilarious. But Basic Four is. Who, is there anybody else in chat right now that likes Basic Four? That's I've never heard of Basic like, Four in my life. Basic Four has all, it has almond shavings, it has dried cranberries. It's such a good mix of flavors. It's like it's basically like deconstructed granola, but better. I never heard of it until you said it, and I have to Google it. Oh my gosh! Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's Scotch Butter. Is that what I'm talking? Is that is that is that, is that a fist bump for Basic Four? No, that's what I'm talking no, about. You can't do that. People yes, that, yes, that eat do Basic that. Four don't do fist that. bump. They don't know how to. We we. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, bottle pitcher, bottle pitcher. Before we go, we always forget. Don't forget. Um, but yeah, guys, I got another question tomorrow. Um, let me know if you guys have any question. But guys, at, at, you know, if you guys want to answer weirdly, whatever, I'll try and make it funny. Oh, by the way, I smoked cigars there. It was freaking hot as fuck. So it was weird to smoke a cigar. Dude, it was so hot here. So hot. Like the amount of humidity. I took a picture of my arm creating sweat while I was doing it. It was disgusting. Oh man, it was it was gross. Yeah. All right, guys. And on that note, um, what do you say here? I'm sorry. What was the question? Deuces. Could you repeat the question, please? Also, you, awesome sticker there, Scott the Smith. If you guys didn't notice that. Could you repeat the question, please? What do we say over here? What do, what do we say over where? Over there. We haven't done the show in so long. I don't remember. What is it that we used to say at this time of the Pro show? Produce? No. Close enough. Produce. Produce.